Sir, I have studied about OSPF, but I still have some questions about router ID. So, can you explain a bit more about router ID, how it works? Uh, OSPF router ID. So, router ID is basically a number, just like I have a number, you have a number. It is a unique identifier, for example, this is a router, so every router has a unique identifier so that it can be identified within the OSPF domain so that other routers can communicate, can send the message to him. If there is no number, how will we know that which destination we are sending the message? So it is a 32-bit number. It can be represented as decimal like 1, 2, 3, 100, 1000 like this or it can be represented like an IP address. For example, we can say uh, 192.168.1.110 dot something. So it is just a number, but once we have configured, then the communication will start. So it can be assigned manually or it can be automatically chosen by the router. There are two methods. First method, we will write the command. We will say, okay, dear router, your ID is 192.168, your router ID. So please start the OSPF process. Or if we forget or if we do not want to do this work, then router will decide automatically. It has the functionality, it has the capability that it can uh, assign the router ID itself. So it will check, okay, how many loopback addresses are there, virtual interfaces. And based on that, it will choose the highest loopback address. For example, if the highest loopback is 99.99.99, .99 it will say, okay, my router ID is this one. It will select automatically and then it will broadcast to the others, multicast actually. OSPF uses multicast. And still, if not, there is no loopback, then it will check, okay, all these physical interfaces, which one has the highest router ID and it will say, okay, a highest interface IP address, then it will say, okay, this is my router ID. So this is how we can choose or a router can choose our router ID. This is how we can configure. Okay, so what is loopback? Where do we use loopback? Loop, loopback, okay. So loopback is a virtual interface which will always be up. We can make sure or we can give assurance to someone. Let's say somebody says, okay, please turn on your router. I want to test whether there is connectivity or any kind of test. So if we give him the address or if we use these physical addresses, physical ports, then this might be down, maybe no cable connected. So testing cannot be done. So a loopback address actually is the virtual interface which will always be up and active. Anybody can test. We usually use it for the testing purpose. And that's why OSPF also prefers the loopback address to be the router ID as compared to the physical, more priority to the loopback. So first manually, if we configure manually router ID, otherwise it will choose highest loop. If no loopback, it will choose the highest interface IP address as a router ID. Okay, then can two routers have same router ID? In an OSPF domain. So within one OSPF domain, two routers cannot have the same router ID because for example, if you have the same ID, same number, and the other person has also the same passport number. If you apply for visa, how will we know whether we grant you or not? Or for example, if you have the same roll number in a class, he has same roll number in a class, how do we identify between, how do we distinguish? Similarly, in OSP of domain, two routers cannot have the same router ID. Otherwise, communication cannot happen. It will still accept or might be it will say if there is update already duplicate. Otherwise, there will be abnormal behavior. Sometime OSPF, uh, neighborship will be up, sometime it will be flapping, so it will be like um, abnormal behavior. So, all OSPF router IDs of each router should be unique, they cannot be repeated. Okay, so if by mistake I configure same router ID on two routers, can I change it? Uh, yes, it can be changed, but after changing the router ID, we have to clear the OSPF process, which means we have to bring down the whole OSPF domain. So it is better you plan properly and don't change again and again. So it is not recommended, but yes, it can be changed. We have to run the command to clear the OSPF process one time after changing. Clear IP OSPF process, that kind of command in Cisco and in Huawei Juniper, different kind of command. So yes, it can be changed, but it is not recommended. Better you plan properly and don't change again and again because OSPF will be disrupted. So, any other question about router ID? No. no. Okay. So I hope your router ID will be clear now. Now you can practice it. I gave you the lab of two routers where you were configuring OSPF between them and then three routers lab. So try that practice lab. And uh, if you guys upload this video, you can also share the link of the lab download, which is made in Packet Tracer. Cisco Packet Tracer is a simulation software in which um, network engineers, those guys can 
practice or if they are going to be a network engineer so you can practice that and if you feel more questions try to change the router id first you observe that how does a router after ospf configuration how they select the router id uh, how you can change and after changing does it take effect if not you can try to clear the process and then check after one minute it will be so these kind of experiments you can do and uh, then you can bring more questions keep noting down and we will have this kind of session so in which we will discuss so guys we are having this kind of series in which we are are uh, discussing the real time problems of the people who are working on the practice lab of we will be starting with ospf then we will do bgp mpls if uh, you want any process or you want to join us physically or you want to join us through zoom so you can also join these kind of session send us the question and we will invite you to participate in this one so that's all for router id today no do you have any more question no, no? okay so we can close it